Sup Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Reviews where today we have ourselves a track by an act named Reimagined by Eve titled Murder and Circus and if we switch over to here this is on YouTube and it features Jim Dummer. This is the uh, new track release Murder and Circus from the EP Lost and Found so I think the album, the EP art for Lost and Found should be on the screen if it, in the title card at least. We're going to be listening through this track from start to finish. And we're going to hear what we think. Let's go. Automatic interest with the guitar on the right instead of both. I mean, it just slaps off the bat, man. The drums are phenomenal. I assume that's AI art, right? It's crazy how good it's got. Very low piano here. I mean, there's just absolutely no filler within this. We're constantly moving between these sections. And while I look forward to like hearing a track in full so I can kind of ascertain the total movement in it, there's, we're definitely not sleeping on those transitions. I love those melodies here, they're gorgeous. I'm well impressed, man. That sounds commercial grade. Record for that fourth one, but I kind of dig how it uh, spices up each loop. That's crazy. That was so short. That track was so short. Like that was that was ferocious. Like there was just so much to take in at once with that song. If I find a place where it kind of uh, shows the track, yeah. Like this is almost progressive. The way we just had to, we'll talk about this more in the conclusion. Yeah, I'm blown away. Because welcome to the conclusion, my review of this track from an act named uh, Reimagined by Eve, titled Murder and Circus, featuring Jim Dummer. This song is tremendous. I, what do I think it's about? 
I'm, I'm not sure what murder and circus is. Maybe it's entering the circus of like social media or something like that and kind of getting absorbed into it and losing your way and not being able to escape or anything like that. Because I noticed all the people having cell phones later on, like it seems like a fun time and stuff like that, but eventually become addicted to like the feeling of being in that circus. That's my take on it from both the video as well as the lyrics and the song itself. Um, the, which I, you know, I suppose is the purpose of an audiovisual experience. Please let me know if I've confused anything, but the singing is wonderful. I thought that the way we sang in regards to the genre of performing it was great. I think we had a nice sort of softness to some of the verse parts there where we came down after that balls to the wall heavy riff at the start. And then in those chorus parts, we had magnificent vocal harmonies there that just really capitalized on the range of the singer versus the backing, the positions and the, the Freaksy Spectrum and Stereo Field the rest of the mix. It was just this magnificent sort of huge tone there that really just, it sounded, because I have a fundamental understanding of music theory and composition as per the rest of the instruments and how they were sort of niched and stacked together, you just knew they kind of found the right notes to kind of sit on top with those third harmonies or whatever. And it's also just like the bits of vocal fry or the growls or the screams that we had occasionally which work well within the genre but ultimately it came together in a way that was very satisfying made sense to have bits and pieces there and we also were able to work with the various different sections throughout this track that we occurred with different sort of musical ideas and motifs and concepts that i think were wonderfully sort of like because if we talk about the structure of the track for a moment with the, with the understanding of the vocals are, are really they, they nailed the vocals I thought they were wonderful and I thought the way they performed was appropriate with the subject matter and I liked the varying ways of expression within that the track itself at 3 minutes 30 with all these different parts within it is tremendously well fleshed out I would have been happy if we'd stayed with that kind of initial idea in the start because the ferocity of the drums plus the kind of sort of the alternate pick sort of guitar rift parts with with the bass coming in later on was just sensational but i think what made it special was that we kind of separated ourselves from that quickly enough to allow for the rest of the song to make sense i think if we had not known to have less of the first part it might have seemed a bit disjointed because we had like a sort of a longer a and then like a bcd but we we kept everything relatively uh i want to say congruent i'm not sure why that is no no congruent is a word that i was using correctly there relatively congruent and um in regards to i suppose it's it's the amount of times the amount of bars etc we came back to those hooks in a way that was very satisfying when they came when you kind of knew you were in a familiar sort of safe space and it was just tremendous i thought that the the various sub pieces of subject matter we were discussing requisited different types of riffs so we had those and i think that we kind of knew to make them sound a bit like how we imagined those specific stanzas were supposed to reflect and that's part of what made the song so interesting. If I talk about a few of the instruments I particularly liked, I thought that the guitar work was phenomenal, really tight on the strings there, great tone to the distortion as well, it was nice and heavy. That's part of why I was saying it was commercial grade, because just everything sounded so tightly and neatly polished within the, within the mix. But it's also just, you know, the fact that, you know, we, we fleshed out things with the guitar, with those on the string, but riffs and the chords and everything, but we also knew to kind of have less guitar sometimes. We made room for the piano in some sections, which is another instrument I really liked. I thought that the broken chords that we expressed there with our right hands suited the lack of mid-range kind of expression of those guitars when they weren't there. But then they stacked really neatly on top of the, 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 the sort of rhythm parts when they were and provided a nice sort of or a complementary lead to what was going on with the vocals, both melodies and harmonies. I thought that that was at a sense of sophistication and wonderment as well, especially with some of those chords, that kind of fourth chord we had, which was almost sort of whimsical in, in that uh, in, in that sort of like closing section there. The keys and guitars work together, even though they can sometimes clash, They part of that is a studio production, but also part of it is just knowing how to sort of niche notes and sort of range choices to, to so they, they work together. but. The, the bass tone, the bass was phenomenal, nice and that low end, they're nice and thick and full and carried things across and was really just powerful. And the drums were, were sensational, that's so quick, like I, I play the drums, 
and I listen to that, I think, man, I know exactly how hard it is to get that stuff tight. The percussionist is sensational. Phenomenal drums. Don't get me wrong. I think less is more in certain situations. I think when you are that sort of full with stuff going on with the kit, it can be better to have less going on with the guitar or the keys or something like that. I never thought there was a position in this track where we were doing too much with the right range of instruments we were encompassing. But nevertheless, I, I think that it's worth noting that the drums are one of my favorite instruments within the mix, primarily because just how so like varied and, and diverse the first style it was, it was great. The instruments coming together like this in combination with the interesting wide range of different riff ideas, it creates a, tr a track that I think is trying to be more symbolic of the subject matter it's discussing per apart than trying to sort of like niche itself together as like one whole sort of journey. I think that's infinitely interesting and intriguing. I think it was a good choice here. It shows more about the band's range in regards to the composition and their style of like preferences. It shows they're not just happy to go guitar, bass, drums, kind of da 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 da. They, they also had some sort of half time ish sort of triplet kind of like uh, wonderful piano drum co uh, composites. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's awesome. If I was to pick a general sort of concept for how this, the music sounded, I think it was meant to sort of relay a sense of fantasy, but also a sense of danger and distortion to it. It was meant to sort of say, hey, look, I know you're in this magical place, but things are not what they seem. And even though it's sort of like a dreamland hypnosis sort of thing, you might want to get away from that. It's not, you're not safe here. It's not a good time. Part of that was the minor chords and the ferocity of some of the, the earlier sort of tones and textures, but it's also just the fact that, again, that fourth chord that I keep coming back to was a little bit unsettling sounding. I was almost like, oh, where are we ascending to? Oh, we're going back down to that minor key. And then, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I thought that things were, there's a lot to talk about there. And I think that's definitely a positive. The studio production, recording, mixing and mastering though, with, with the understanding that the performance was absolutely tight and there was not a note out of place as far as I'm concerned, it was tremendous. I, I really appreciated the detail, the effort that went into getting the, the guitars, bass, vocals, pianos, drums, everything nice and sort of neatly mixed and really sort of uh, well behaved within the Freaksy Spectrum and stereo field. Things didn't sound sort of muffled or stifled there. There was a great sense of dynamic range. Things were not the same loud as the entire time. You know, when the pianos came in, for example, things were nice and sort of soothing. And it's very different to some of the more heavier bits. And it was still nice and loud without pumping though, but there was a nice sense of things being glued and it sounded, again, professional because of that. Overall, I think that it's it's a really great first impression to this reimagined by Eve track, and I think they're a band that people need to sort of give a try and have a listen to. And I, if this is the quality of the stuff that they're releasing, then I look forward um, to potentially, if I get the chance, to potentially checking out Murder. I lost and found the, the EP in my own time, but thank you very much for watching my review of this track from Reimagined by Eve, titled Murder and Circus, featuring Jim Dummer, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show them some love via their various social medias and their YouTube page, and stay cool and stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time, as either help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, and I'll catch you in the next review. Spider Hands out.